Mm, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another art cast. As we return to our weed picking saga, um, this is interesting on a number of levels. You may notice that the layout has changed. This may or may not be the new format for uh, art casts and uh, let's draws by me. Um. We're definitely going to keep that background, that background of the uh, familiar faces, face wall, the checkerboard. Uh, but this, um, I found that you can set, ooh, pardon me, uh, that was, that's my quick breakfast of a banana and a coffee. But I found out that you can do something in Saya called New Window. And I knew you could do that, but I didn't know that you could set it up that OBS just records that. And I was like, oh, that's a neat trick. That's very useful. It doesn't update in real time, though. So you can't see my actual pen moving across the, the screen, which would, you know, actually be a little more, uh, a little bit more helpful than it is, but still it's neat. You get to see like an updated version or a version that's not always moving and jumping around. On the inverse, the little uh, window to your far right is brought to you by a program I found called Magic Window. And uh, I was looking on OBS, I was looking through the forms, and I was asking, is there some way to get like the camera to follow the mouse because I've seen that I've seen that before people kind of zoom in on the mouse and I don't know what people are doing people, some people are saying well that's an effect of editing after the fact people uh, go in in their editors and uh, they do that for demonstrations and whatnot, and that would take forever if I were going to do it in this format and then I stumbled upon someone who came up with the program Magic Window. It's a very, very simple program. Um, you can adjust the size of the window. You can't adjust how far the uh, how far I guess the camera is close to the mouse, or you can by making it just a huge uh, a huge window. It's it's a neat effect. It does it's, and you it follows everything on every desktop. That's what you're seeing. Um, Pure Image for the first time. Pure Image is a reference program. I e see my last video. I can't get enough of it. It's great, but I've no so for some reason OBS will not record that either. So I don't think you've ever seen it on screen before. That's neat. But anyway, it follows uh, it follows my drawing pretty well, a little too well. When you start to speed up the footage, it, it goes a little crazy. That's why this video is going to be an hour long instead of the 30 minutes that I've been producing. Because, well, first of all, I'm usually out here more than an hour. So that's that's just fine. But, any faster and it, your brain will melt, I find. This would be perfect for maybe actual live streaming. Although I've come to the conclusion that my, my internet is absolute garbage. I've, I, the best I could do is 480 for streaming. And uh, it's, I don't know. I mean, I like hanging out with you guys. I could, I could definitely do more Let's Draws, but gaming is pretty much out of the question for me. But anyway, this is the title card for um, my Hilda video, my, The Colors of Hilda. And uh, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of happy with this image, but I'm kind of not. I wish I'd like maybe if I could like spend more time on it, which maybe I will revisit it. 
when everything starts to settle down, I get a few commissions out of the way and and just, you know, just everything. Um, I think if I, like, was it really able to polish it, it would, like, this could actually, like, I don't know, make the rounds. But anyway, yeah, this is the title card for that video. Oh, um... Yeah, that's say uh, sometimes when I work with a large enough image and I have to save it, it will go and um, sputter a bit. Yeah, I kicked I think I kicked this out in like maybe the recording says it's an hour. I th and we're working at maybe double speed. So yeah, this took about maybe 3 hours to make. I was very happy with the way that video uh, turned out. A little disappointed by the reception, but I think this was just because uh, I haven't posted for so very long on YouTube. And it's just kind of, people are, it's, you know, dropping. I don't tell people to, like, ring the bell or subscribe or anything, like, calls to action. Maybe I should do that. But, I don't know, I just... I usually am under the assumption that, oh, well, you know, you, people know what they know, and if it's important to them, they'll do it. <laughs> like, usually by the time, like, the same three people show up in a video, I, like, I watch a video, and then and YouTube just, you know, will... Say, oh, you like this video. Do you want to, like, see the same guy again and again and again? I'm like, yeah, sure. Also, would you like to see these Nazi videos? They're like, no, fuck off. But anyway, the point is, by the same time I see, like, the same guy or girl three times, I'll usually subscribe if I like their stuff. On that note, is it just me or is YouTube, like, you see, when I used to find such great music on YouTube, just from, like, typing in one song, YouTube's uh, analytics would be like, oh, hey, do you want to, like, listen to all these other great, like, 80s songs or, like, hair metal or, like, uh, anime themes or something like that? I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. That may have been, like, four years ago. Oh, I guess I turned off the, the, the window. It'll pop back on. I think I had to go and check something. There we go. See, you can see OBS. I have to be careful because it sees everything. So uh, I'd have to make sure I don't actually show any sensitive material. Like my, my actual desktop or like any login passwords and stuff like that. But like... I don't know. It's just like YouTube is now one giant circle. Like they'll just send me to the same thing over and over again. It's like I watch one clip of JoJo and then that's the only thing it will show me for like the rest of the damn week. I have to remember what I want to see before I can see it. It's like I remember like my last couple of years of college and I just like type in like the like cartoon theme songs and I'd watch a video of all the 80s cartoon theme songs and then it started popping up videos about all the actual episodes and I was like hell yeah I want to I want to see some some Gravesdale High that sounds awesome thank you YouTube <clears throat> the wuzzles how delightful thank you YouTube now it's like, do you want to hear, uh, I don't know, Ninja Sex Party for like the 107th time? It's like, well, no, can't you just like, it's like, aren't there other like comedic, oh, pardon me, I gotta reach, like aren't there other comedy bands? course i guess that's the point that's how youtube makes its money now 
It's by trying to funnel you into one person over and over again. Or they've just simplified the whole thing where it's just like the analog is dirt simple. And it's just like, oh, you like this one thing. We're going to stick, you know, give it that to you. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I try to make the hair flow into the waterfall and then into the river. The whole idea is that, uh, that Hilda is somewhat an avatar of her world. God, that, that just, that's, the series is just beautiful. And yeah, by the way, you can find all the colors in Hilda on Hilda, you know, that kind of orange and yellow and blue. And I'm using a little bit kind of a vector slash uh, freeforming techniques to kind of just, I don't know, build the, build the forms and shapes. I hope that series... Ooh. Pardon me, I'm moving around a bush. Mm. I hope that series drops again soon. Let's see, we'll go over here. Oh, I may, I may take a picture of this. There is a lovely um, bundle of nice purple flowers. They've just got, come and bloomed. It's very nice. It reminds me to do that. <laughs> oh, um, let's see, we have these pots kind of hanging up there like they're made to sit against a wall and uh, hang there. And one time, uh, one time I was doing this, and I just started walking around, and all of a sudden, like a bird, just like a quail, it was a quail, it just like popped out. And started just like screaming and and uh, hooping and hollering and and I was like, oh my god, what, what the hell? It's like, oh, I disturbed it. And it it it's screaming and it's it's running away from me. And I'm like, what was that about? And I look inside and I see a bunch of little quail eggs. And I'm like, oh, okay, so it made its nest there. And what was what it was doing? I assume. Now, this is an evolutionary theory, but I'm either assuming that, one, it's just running the hell away because I spooked it, or two, it was trying to lure me away from the nest by, uh, I guess, I don't know, sacrificing itself, hoping to make a run for it, and hopefully making it back to the nest. But the uh, point is that quail, they will just, uh, they will just lay eggs anywhere. We've had them in... Uh, We've had them in, let's see, I found a couple under, most mostly in trees or in baskets. Like, they, there's a flower bed out there that they've been in. There's a potter, a big pot that with a uh, kind of fern in it, and they've made their nest there before. And if they think that you don't see them, they will just sit and stand in place. I think that's just because I was so eye-level to this one and the pot was so small that it, it thought I couldn't, there was no way I couldn't have seen it. But if you, like, you know, nudge, nudge a branch out of the way and you see it, and it'll just sit there and kind of stare at you. Oh, this one, although the one time, how I found uh, the nest in the, uh, in the potters, I had to water the, I had to water the fern, and I, uh, I turn the hose on full blast and it just sprouts it. It just like douses this bird and it just pops out and runs away. I'm like, oh, geez. And then oddly enough, the next morning, the eggs were gone. It, I don't know how it did it, but it managed to move its own eggs. I don't, I don't, how would they do that? Maybe we'll look up a YouTube video, like quail, how quails move their eggs. 
or if if a if you find a bird's nest, how can they move their eggs? Because I don't think they hatched. And I'm hoping like some animal didn't cats don't eat eggs. And there's nothing around here that does. Maybe, I don't know. We got a lot of coyotes. I think this is kind of appropriate since Hilda uh, is always talking about her, what, her version of nature. She's always trying to explore. Except she's got like deer foxes and weather spirits. And I've got quails and uh, scorpones. <laughs> oh, that's a... <laughs> I've got an app. It's a habit app. It reminds me to uh, turn off... Uh, check the back door to make sure it's locked. The door to the garage, because i got a bunch of equipment out there. And it reminds me to turn off Grandma's... A cable box, which for some reason can't be turned off with the remote, or she she doesn't know how to turn it off with the remote, and uh, that thing gets hot for some reason. It's one of we have Cox, and she she turns it on and then turns off the TV, but not that. And I touch it, and it's like it's like really super hot. And I'm like, how much how much electricity does this thing use? So I had to put a reminder of uh, of what I what I do to, to do that. So the quote of the day is, uh, so many of our dreams at first seem impossible, then they seem improbable, and then we... Is this messing up my timing? Yeah, I'm not going to... It was by Nelson Mandela. I'll put the full quote up if I can remember. But I'm not going to get out of this... Uh, I'm not going to stop the video and mess with the timing. Ooh, do 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 This is life, people. Does this count as a a a a m s r a? Is that what it's called? A m s r a. Like here, that's some lovely rocks for you. Ooh, ooh, rocks. Oh, here. Let's see. Good luck. Actually, that does sound satisfying. Let's see if I can get that on on mic. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here's a good weed. Ah, did that sound... It's not really a weed. It's more like crabgrass. A, a tuff of grass. But we'll see how that plays for audio. I realized that I overproduced the hell out of my videos. It's like yesterday, I, I, I'm setting up, I'm doing another, uh, I got B-roll for a, uh, another tasting video, another snack break. And I haven't actually eaten the snacks yet. What's this now? I didn't know I'd get updates. That's, oh, that's a little annoying. Um, coffee, background, music. I have subscribed to just like a jazz channel from when I'm drawing sometimes. Oh. But speaking with speaking, I overproduce my videos. I was getting B-roll before I even tasted it. It's sunflower seeds, and it should be up by the end of the, like end of the week. Luckily, if I can uh, record it today and just edit it real quickly. But I put I made B-roll of uh, a sunflower seed tasting video. I uh, set up a kind of uh, studio uh, photography setup. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, what do we talk about first? Okay, anyway, I've got these little, like, uh, flexible uh, hoses that I uh, made little stands out of, and I, I propped the sunflower seeds on up on against them and uh 
took photographs of the front and the back and all three of the bags together and then each one of them separately and then the backs and the little pull quotes on the back and then after that i set up the my camera and i i tried to i don't think i had the right um uh, i don't think i had the right sim card because it wouldn't let me record at uh, 60 frames per second. I was going to do slow motion as I pour out these different sunflower seeds into little uh, dainty glass bowls. But by the time I, I had everything, you know, I got the light where I wanted it. By the time I actually took the photographs, it was like 5.30 I like I think I started at I think I started at five and it was five thirty and it was about time to get dinner ready. So I was like, oh well, I'll just uh I'll just finish this later. And I poured all the seeds back and I sealed up the bags. It'll I think it'll look nice. But the point is is I think I overproduced my videos. Like the Thundercats one. Let's see, I had the Thundercats and I had the Invader Zim. What I've started doing is trying to record myself talking about all these different stuff. You know, video subjects and everything. And, uh, and then, you know, I was like, okay, well, if I record myself, I will then be able to just, like, I don't have to, like, look through so much footage. I can just cut to me and that'll be enough but then i get i become a coward and i'm like oh god i'm i'm so this is this is horrible there's nothing interesting on screen uh i think that way you may also think that way too but i guess if you stuck it through uh this far you at least find me a little bit interesting and i should probably exert a little bit more confidence but uh, i always end up just like doing double my work because then I comb through the footage anyway and try to find like the best footage to put alongside me, which is actually, you know what? It's actually a pretty good uh, habit to do just because you can show a clip and you too. And if you show a clip with you next to it, I don't, I think it makes it harder for YouTube to actually uh, detect it. Not that I'm trying to get away with anything illegal. You should be able to just throw the clip up with your own voice underneath it. But again, talking about the problems with YouTube, you can't... Appeals are bullshit and the automatic detection is garbage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although that, uh, and then sometimes, like, my, I'll, the, the camera will go out of focus, and I'll be like, oh, okay, well, I'll just use the, the full footage, and just cut away to that, and then hide my sins. And then I see, uh, Ashen. Now, Ashen, um... His videos are great. He'll do unboxing videos where he just like, he'll just set a camera in front of his couch. And now after a few times, that couch has become a character and it's great. And I should just like, uh, speaking of the quotes of the day, I saw a quote by Bruce Lee and it says, if you overthink something, you'll never do it. And I, I actually took a screen grab of that. I was like, you know what? That's good advice. That's how I started doing these kind of brands of art casts just to kind of not have something but work there there's uh i think there's filling in a spot how, how can i put this there's this sort of philosophy and it reminds me of a penny arcade strip and it uh, it's, it's like a funeral for someone it's like one of the really early early days and it says uh uh, 
it was criticizing, you know, this guy's work. And it says, you know, like, people would rather have crap five days, I mean, seven, crap seven days a week than steak once a week. And it's like, well, you know. But when you're starting out and you, you can eat, over plan something to death, which is, I think, what I've actually done. With a lot of my uh, with a lot of my projects, and I should just get them out. And I should stop thinking of it as because I'm you're going to make mistakes. Like we're, this is just we're all going to fumble up somehow, no matter what how much time we we f- sit and plan and focus, and then we just use that as learning towards something. Oh, I don't think, I don't know if you picked that up, but uh, there's a dumbass woodpecker that just decided to try and find grubs in a, uh, in a water cooler across the street. But I should think of this as less of working... Uh, less of just throwing something up and then more of it is working towards something. Creating a pattern. Getting better at it. I mean, that's how I... That's how you get good at anything. Keep at it. Uh, what's this? Okay, I pretty much got the whole side of the yard done. No, I just got to go th- underneath this little patch of trees. And then we'll move on to around the kitchen. Oh, boy, we're only halfway there. Oh, well. Hello, little bird. There's a little bird sitting on top of a saguaro, and he's just kind of peeking at me. <laughs> This, uh, the second or the third window looks a little better when you're just ha- you're doing detail work, which I may have to remember. There may have to be stages to how I do these, uh, do these let's draws. I may have to do, like when I'm sketching, I'll do like one whole thing. I may, I may do it as... I don't know. I may either use window number one or window number two just for sketching. So that everyone can see what I'm doing and then use the magic window for detail work because it is rather nice to look at. (laughs) This, uh, the magic window would actually be pretty, uh, work out pretty well for Let's Plays. If you wanted to see detail in like, I don't know, if you were playing maybe a card game or an RPG where you'd want the audience to actually see. And I guess you have to be playing with a computer and a mouse, which I don't think would actually work with games like a Disco Elysium. <sighs> I mean, I'm thinking like old school RPGs where you actually hover the mouse over things and you can you can let the audience read it as well. I may have to keep that in mind because I, I, I bought a bundle from uh, Steam or Fanatic or one of the... whichever company's in junction with the other. But I bought a bundle for like maybe four bucks and got like, I don't know, 50 games. <sighs> But I'll have to keep that in mind because that would be a neat trick. <laughs> I wish that they. I wish that you could uh, 
find a way to pull it out a little more, adjust the speed, adjust the tracking. Like there should be like a window of tracking, like a magic window within the window that lets you say, okay, I, would, I want the mouse to be able to move in the center of this. MASH actress dies. Kelly. Oh, well, now it went away. Oh, shit. Oh, that's depressing. But how old was she? Let me see. Let's see if I can just peek down at it. Uh, uh, Nurse Kelly uh, Yamato, 72. Well, that's that's a little younger compared to, like, all the other celebrity deaths that have been happening sooner. I mean, uh, recently. Like, the old actors, not like Kobe. Let's see, what, what post did I see the other day? It was like, MASH was the the sound to a, a generation falling asleep. Like, at least like my generation, because whenever that went on, you were like, oh, okay. I think it actually was right after um, The Critic one time. I remember watching The Critic and being like, ah, oh, okay, cartoon. I was too young to really understand any of it, but I... Uh, I was like, oh, okay, cartoon. Oh, my cartoon's over. And then the MASH theme kicked in. You're like, oh, cool, helicopters. What is this? What's this show about? And it's a bunch of people talking around in tents. And then blood, and you're like, oh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> and that's a dog. What time is it? Huh. 8.16. I'll, uh... I'll have to wake up Grandma in about an hour. She doesn't like to sleep past 9. No matter what she's done the next day. God, I wish... I, I hope I have half the gumption she does. When I'm her age. <laughs> they had to put new uh she gets these shots under her knees you may probably know of this procedure but they put in basically a gel almost almost like a gel if you you know if your cartilage is uh sort of worn down in your knees at a certain age, they can, uh, you know, put in new stuff underneath the knee, the uh, kneecaps. And it was really neat. The procedure they uh, they have this uh, they have this anesthesia. It's this surface level anesthesia, and the bottle is pressurized. So this nurse, all she did was she, she was standing like five feet away. So you knew she did this like like freaking a hundred times a day. Or like hundred times a week, five times a day. That 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 math is off. I'm. It's too early. Um, but anyway, she's standing like six feet away, and she just like lifts the cap off the bottle, and it just sprays this huge stream over this doctor's shoulder, and nobody's worried about getting sprayed in the face. Uh, and I'm just staring at it. And then they, they of course have to get past the kneecap and into the, in between the bones where the cartilage once was. So this needle that they, uh, they break out is long. It's like really, like freaking long. And uh, I guess the anesthesia is enough that you just don't, you don't feel anything when they just like, they, the doctor's like poking under your kneecap, you know, looking for a good spot and she'll just, you know, put it in. And then, like, inject a ton of goo into your knee. And, of course, Grandma was, like, uh, saying, oh, I feel so much. I feel better already. And I was thinking, like, okay, that might be the placebo effect. Uh, and you need, like, you need three treatments of this uh, for each knee. 
they won't let you like I th- I think they used to like give it out or they can but not for someone grandma's age. They want they want to space it all out. I was like, "Oh, that's the kind of the placebo effect." But by gumption, she she's doing running around again. She's been she's been so good to the family, like every every family member, uh, you know. Even there's family members that even still depend on her. So I, I that's why I go out of my way to to try to do anything I can for. Her. Like she's she can watch TV again. Like I, I she she's so happy. I bought her. Uh, let's see. I got her set up with like a wireless headphones, uh, Bluetooth receiver on her big TV, so that way she could just like have these headphones around her ears. I I went back to the store three or four times to find just the the right pair that she would like on her ears, and she was so happy. She nearly broke down in tears. You know what? Sitting here, the sun's shining on me. I have my family. I'm able to do things that I love. You know, just kind of puts it all into perspective a little bit. Come what may. Either that or it's the sugar from the banana kicking in. I like, that's that's my breakfast. I like, I eat, like, I get up at five. And then I'll have, like, two cups of coffee spaced out. And then whenever I need to start doing something, I'll just grab a banana and and shove it down my gullet. (laughs) Yeah, that magic window is definitely, definitely made for, like, slow detail work. I may have to remember that. To move, to transition from sketching to... Uh, finishing. I've recorded a bunch of other videos uh, with it. And, yeah, again, I, I'd say that once you get past, like, maybe four times the speed, it starts to just become a blur. And it's it's not... It's not appreciable anymore. It's It's more annoying. And of course, I'm watching this on a little you on a little phone screen, and you can kind of make out what I'm doing. You can't really make out what I'm doing in the the bottom left screen, but you can definitely see the detail work in that one. I don't. Hey, give me a shout out. Are you watching this on a phone screen, a tablet screen, or like a home computer, like a, a decent sized monitor? Oh, ow. I'm in the rock bed. I'm in the rock bed. Ow, ow, ow. Okay. Yeah, maybe like one more day of this and all the weeds will be gone. And then I can start focusing on trimming back some of the plants. There was supposed to be a frost. And we had to cover up all our plants, but it never came. It got pretty cold. But not cold enough to kill anything. You know what? I'm actually I actually put a lot of detail into this drawing. Huh, I'm surprised. Mm-hmm. I guess I should talk about my feelings on Hilda. One, I love it. I think I made that clear in the video. Uh, and two, I wanted to talk about the colors, which was like the main, just like, just a fantastic, fantastic uh, visual compilation. It's it's actually absent from 
a little bit of the comics. The comics is, are more simple. Um, I'm going to put this. The drawings are more complex. But I think the color detail is a little bit more simplified. Because, of course, in a comic, you can just, like, work with... You can set up establishing shots, and then you can drop the detail out of the background in order to, you know, be more efficient. <laughs> oh, I guess one thing I should talk about is the music, which I is, like, really, really, uh, like, moody. I was actually surprised by it. I mean, it's got like a weird, like almost indie soundtrack, which I included in the video. Um, but the actual score itself is, and I don't know if, um, I don't know if Stranger Things had anything to do it, but it was like really kind of poppy and synthy, especially during all the scary moments in like the dark woods and everything. I was like, ah. Oh. It's like, oh man, this totally reminds me of like, uh, it's like this totally reminds me of Stranger Things. And I don't know if that was a conscious decision or if that, that style is just coming back. It also reminded me of like, um, like Escape from New York, you know, the kind of, uh, that kind of, I was going to say Clive Barker, but that's not right. Who am I thinking of? Clive Barker and... Shit. Oh, there's a hummingbird. Oh, wow. It's going... It's it's getting all the honeysuckles. And now it's just up in the tree, kind of... Oh, no, it went back. It wanted to like look at that tree for some reason. Clive Barker and <sighs> Nightmare on Elm Street. I know, I know it's not Clive Barker. It's, um, come on. I just saw a post about Nightbreed and how good it was and how the monsters were actually good. Cl Clive Barker and, um, oh, pisser. That's why I shouldn't do this without a computer in front of me. Well, you know, I put up the... Hmm. What's this now? It stopped. Huh. Hold on a second. Did I not... Okay. So the... The video stopped for a little bit, so I'll have to do a little bit of editing magic to kind of replace everything. I got a little, I guess I've got a little extra audio to work with. But anyway, I put up the footage by now of who it might be. Might be, and definitely, who will definitely be. Oh, the thing. Come on. Come on, Chad. You can do this. Oh, why am I blanking so hard on this crap? I'm super bad with names. I'm, like, horrible with names. It's not Clive Barker. Clive Barker did Hellraiser. I can remember that. Now I'm thinking of just Clive Barker because I've said Clive Barker so many times. And now I'm thinking of, like, an anthropomorphic dog named Clive Barker. Damn it. Come on. People under the stairs. Shit. Oh, that's gonna. That's this. This is embarrassing. Oh well. I bet as soon as I relax my brain, it'll it'll pop in. Something something's new nightmare. Damn it! Come on. <laughs> I thought Wes Anderson. Why would I think Wes Anderson? Uh. We, uh Shit. Oh, well. I'll have to wash my hands because this is... I'm working on a patch that I uh, sprayed with poison. 
or a herbicide. And it's 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 dead, but it's still on the ground, so which like kind of defeats the point. They need plant sp plant killer and dissolver, which I guess would just be acid. Wes Craven, there it is. Ha, ah. ah. ha. Wes Anderson. Okay, so there was a connection. Okay. I knew it. I. That's how my brain works. That's why I. I. I kind of need a script. Because I can't just, like, sit there and be like, oh, you know, that guy. That guy that did the thing. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm worked on, I'm working on this hillside a lot more than I remembered. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the music is like I was actually blown away by that, and I was wondering why n it it was ambient, uh, and I was a little I was concerned why no one was talking about it, and I'm trying to think of if it's if any other Netflix show has been using that kind of almost '80s synth Stranger Things kind of soundtrack. And I can't really think of anything. Oh, and by the way, I'm a little pissed that uh, I, I, I think other people have expressed this opinion as well, that Klaus got uh, ripped off at the Oscars. I mean, I kind of had a feeling. Actually, no, I was actually working under a theory. I was trying to, I was thinking like, oh, this will be interesting because it'll prove whether or not that the uh, the voters, you know, whoever those they are, like you know, f like meatloaf. Meatloaf is on the committee for some reason, but I was like, okay, this will either prove if they one actually know like what they were voting on last year. Ooh, the acoustics are really good here. I was like, this will prove if they, like, really knew the spider, Into the Spider-Verse was, like, like an actual breakthrough and had, a, like, a ton of craft with the animators animating on, like, like twos and threes and then transitioning based on, like, key ca character developments and, and stuff like that. And, and the, you know, breakthrough in the technology uh, with, uh, with the, you know, the program recognizing different line ridges and, and draw, making lines based off that and how the animators were able to like like move the expressions around via like individually painted lines I was like I, I, I was again I was con I, I was excited to see if they knew what they were doing or if they thought that Into the Spider-Verse was a Disney movie. And they were like, oh, okay, well, Disney. It's Spider-Man. Spider-Man, uh, Disney just bought Marvel. We'll vote for that. And it, it seems like <laughs> that theory has held up. Because they did, uh, they voted for Toy Story. I think the biggest breakthrough that Toy Story 4 came up with is that they they were able to replicate uh, lenses, like actual real life lenses, in in 3D now, which they they pop they you know they have camera settings for their their 3D camera, which is I, good, I guess. Great, I think I think they had ways of doing that before. I know that Surf's Up, they, they, they came up, they, Disney totes that they came up with, like, a handheld camera that makes it easier to, like, replicate real-life camera movements. And they're like, oh, look at this. But I know that Surf Up was the first one to do that. In fact, they had, like, a huge, like, 
they were the ones that had this huge they there's a phone there's footage of a guy and he's like toting around this huge ass it's it's almost like a camera i think it is a camera but it's not recording anything in front of it it's just like the pattern of movements are being moved in 3d space and you can see it so yeah surfs up actually more of a breakthrough more worthy of an oscar than toy story 4 in this humble commentator's opinion. But, you know, I guess that... I guess... Uh, I guess Klaus will only have to do deal with, you know... Get by on seven Emmys and a BAFA... And BAFTA. That's what, how to pronounce that word. And, you know, the only criticism I have for, for Klaus is that I'm actu I am actually was a little disappointed that they couldn't get that original voice actor. But I guess they wanted more of a, you know, I guess they wanted more names attached. But I got, like, really used to, I watched that short so many times, I got really used to whoever was voicing that, uh, whoever was voicing Jasper originally. I guess it was a temp track, but I just got, like... It's weird. I don't know. I, I don't know the guy's name off the top of my head, but it's really weird. Like he's they're obviously supposed to be like European and British and and stuff like that. And that guy is definitely not. Definitely not British. Also, um, I can see what they were going for, but the contemporary soundtrack with uh you know, with the, with Jasper hustling all the kids to get them to write letters, um, it fits, but it doesn't. Or rather, it does fit, and I keep flipping back and forth whether I like it or not. Because I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's perfect. That's that's a neat little joke, and he's he's he's. He's working the street to get these kids to write some letters so he can he can get home. And then you have when he calls out that little brat for hitting him in the snow and face with a snowball, and he's like, "Don't mess with the postman." And I'm like, "Eh, okay." But that's immediately. Uh, gives way to like the best scene in the movie where like all the kids start doing nice thing and like harmony spreads throughout the town what am i doing here new folders new files oh yeah yeah i added uh the deer fox god what's his name i added the deer fox at the last minute you know what this actually looks pretty nice Sometimes I, I, I look at things when I'm done, and I think, oh, okay, well, it's done. Like, I wish I could have done better. It really wasn't worth all that time I put into it, or I should have put more, more time into it to make it look even better. And then sometimes I surprise myself. I'm like, oh, okay. That actually looks pretty decent. Oh, her hat. Yeah, that's right. Her hat becomes the star field. Oh, I'm a genius. Oh. <laughs> I'm now leaning down. And this actually works out pretty well. Because the camera is still in front of me. I'm able to pick the weeds. And the camera somewhat remains in the same spot. Yeah, this is nice. This will work out great. <clears throat> oh, fuck me. Pardon me, but there's like this huge wall of clovers that have just like... Oh, and a cactus. Wonderful. There's a cactus right smack dab in the middle of uh, all the bricks. Uh, life finds a way, huh? Ugh. 
actually I'll uh, I'll deal with this little patch first. I was on my way over there and I've stumbled upon this. That's the only thing I was really rooting for for the Oscars. I, I don't know what what else won. Parasite. I know that that uh, that ruffled some feathers who were praying for Joker to win. Uh, I don't know. Watch Taxi Driver. Of course, JoJo winning with that, that director bitching about, oh, you can't make comedy anymore. It's like, no, you can't just make stupid comedy anymore. It's like, no one gives a crap about a guy losing his, like, three alcoholics. Three chronic alcoholics who do nothing but mess up with their, mess their lives up. And then suffer no repercussions. They still get to, like, live their fucking rich white lives and do the whole thing over and over again. But he lost his tooth. No. Like every other dumbass was like quoting, we're the wolf pack. Although, you know what? That actor, he took that paycheck and took those jobs and he ended up uh, Galifianakis? Yeah, that's his name. He ended up uh, taking care of a sweet elderly woman like he 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 would go to a laundromat and this woman who is like needy not needy like need full like destitute she'd offer to like fold clothes in order in exchange for money and she he hung out with her and like took care of her a little bit when when he was still working at that laundromat and then when he got a bunch of money he set her up with you know with an apartment. And... So, yeah, something something good came out of that. <laughs> God, what am I... What am I doing now? I guess I'm just looking. Oh, did I did it stop again? No. Okay. Hmm. I guess I'm just kind of. Oh, what, I'm trying to do something with the ears. That's what's going on. I have too many layers in the in the in the setup, so <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about this format and I'm thinking, can I do an hour a day of just talking? And I think, well yeah, of course you can. But then I think like there are podcasts and there are people that meet and they do like maybe well, let's see. Soup Castle Super Beast does four hours. So that's like, you know, that's like a good chunk of the week if you're going to do by the hourly basis. Oh, there we go. We're done. Hold on a second. Let me finish my thought about this. I was thinking, can I keep doing this? And I'm thinking, well, there are radio DJs that just do this all the time. They That's their job. They get up and they have to talk. And they have talk show hosts. And you, you, you could do that. And I think about podcasts, and I think, well, there's some podcasts that only produce one hour of audio a week, or longer than that, and they just trimmed it, trim it down until they get pure gold for most of it, or at least something halfway decent. This is just stream of consciousness thinking. So, who knows? I'm still trying to find my style. It's a work in progress. And this... Yeah, I'm act. Wait, did I take the... Uh, yeah, I took the string... I took the um, hair out of her 
out of the back of there. Yeah, I did that because I wanted the waterfall to look like more of a waterfall. And I wanted to separate those two fields of blue. That's what I did. Okay. I could have done her little run pose a little better. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. God, my phone's filthy. Okay. I will see you all later. I've got to clean my phone. Anyway, thank you all for joining me, and goodbye.